Welcome back. The newly re-elected head of FIFA, Gianni Infantino, has praised what he called his organization's commitment to human rights. Not many would agree with that, though, especially after the treatment of migrant workers in the run-up to last year's World Cup in Qatar. Some campaigners estimate that as many as 500 workers died and other alleged abuses are still emerging. ITV News has heard from security guards from Pakistan who claimed they were arrested and deported after complaining about unpaid wages. Here's our sports editor, Steve Scott, on FIFA's shameful legacy. <laughs> It was written in the stars. In football terms, there's little argument that the World Cup in Qatar was a huge success. Financially, it earned FIFA billions. But some claim it was the worst experience of their lives. Abdul Samad Afridi and Abid Ali Khan bought expensive work visas because they say they were promised six months contracts as security guards in Qatar. <laughs> But midway through their contracts, as they and other colleagues headed to complain to their bosses about unpaid wages, they claim they were arrested, thrown into jail and then deported back to Pakistan. They broke my heart and deported me without any valid reason. What else was I doing but was asking for my rights? I worked for Qatar, for FIFA, and we made the event successful. Even then, they deported us without any reason. We all had many debts. People have sold their properties, jewellery. That's why we couldn't contact our family. They kept us in jail for five days and then deported us. Human and Labour Rights Group Equidem claims its research shows thousands of workers who helped put FIFA's tournament on are still owed millions of dollars in unpaid wages. We're talking about the richest sporting body in the world, which makes billions of dollars for itself and its stakeholders. If there's one thing they don't have a shortage of, it's cash. So why not pay for these workers? Today in Rwanda, Gianni Infantino has handed another four-year term as FIFA president. Afterwards, he reflected on how his organization had prioritized human rights. We took on board as well our responsibility to deal with human rights matters and to deal with the legacy of this World Cup, the first in the Middle East, Shukran, Qatar. In response to Equidem's allegations, Qatar's international media office told ITV News that the security workers were among 200 who were paid in full and their contracts were lawfully concluded, adding Qatar does not arrest or deport any worker for trying to resolve an employment dispute. The World Cup may be long gone, the ramifications continue. Steve, for all the criticism of FIFA, there was some progress, wasn't there, on the equality for the women's game? Yeah, that's right, Charlene. There's long been a huge discrepancy between the prize money for the men's and the women's World Cup. Today, Gianni Infantino narrowed that gap. It means that the women's tournament this summer, being played in Australia and New Zealand, will get prize money... Um, a 300% increase compared to the last tournament, up to 150 million US dollars. That compares to about 450 million for the men in Qatar. Infantino says he wants there to be parity in four years' time. As he was announcing this, also he took a swipe at uh, broadcasters for not paying uh, enough money for TV rights for this uh, World Cup for women. What he didn't say, though, as far as commercial networks uh, in Europe are concerned, for I example, um, none of the games are going to be paid in prime time here. So that's a not a surprise that the bidding is a little bit lower because networks like ITV uh, who sell advertising around those games well the advertisers simply won't be playing uh, paying top dollar but a step in the right direction today all right Steve thanks very much